We are back. Uh, uh, why does that make me remember Party Tommy? <laughs> of all people, <laughs> of all people, when he does that show before, he say we uh, are Party Tommy. Party Tommy. Heard about it. Anyway, <laughs> did you miss us? We have another exciting episode for you today. By now, you should know that Jasiri is your favorite sport for real talk and. Good vibes. Yep. We bring it. Good vibes. Now, speaking of real talk, my algorithm is always throwing things up. But this one that it brought up was an interesting one because it's about single parenting all over my timeline. And that's because of a tweet from Vector the Rapper. I used to have a crush on him. We'll move on. He said, <laughs> the alarming rate of single parents destroying the lives of their kids out of emotional sentiment is crazy. You have a child with someone, but because y'all can't be together, you sabotage the foundation of the child's sanity by doing everything possible to destroy the connection they have with the other parent during their formative years. In case you are slow, you are destroying your child's immediate future peace and confidence and creating one more mentally unstable human in the society. This, this is sounding a little bit like it's a bit personal. I, mm. I don't know. You know, but I'm very... <sighs> There's a lot of sense in what he's saying. Obviously, his tweet got a lot of reactions, and people uh, commented about the challenges of single parenting. So let's so let's see some of you know what they said. Some ex users had plenty to it say. It always happens on ex. So uh, true. No. Men, if you ain't ready financially, use rubber, please. Women, if you ain't ready or you know he can't take care of you, make sure to use rubber. Men, stop abandoning your child if shit happens. Single parenting breeds hatred. Be responsible. Mm -hmm. Facts. The damage will be felt by the child, so many adults are struggling with the mental issues because two people couldn't put aside their issues and give them the proper care and love that they deserve. Mm. I don't know. So this one it says, this is really sad. I was a single mom since I was 15, and my daughter's dad has never contributed anything to her education or feeding. But I made sure to connect her with that side of her family. Now that he's married with kids, I tell her to check in on her siblings. No matter the circumstances surrounding a child's birth, they should know and make choices for themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think... Uh, Why did you bring this up to me? It's not me. It's the producer. Why? I, I, I think that... I, under, I understand the essence of his tweets and where he's coming from. But when you come down to the challenges of two people day to day, whatever ended a relationship, it's a lot more cloudy and a lot less black and white than what he put out. Yeah. We've seen a lot of... And I think we always have a lot of... Um, vitriol is not the word. We always have a lot of energy for the parent who's a single parent <laughs> yeah. and lack a lot of energy for the parent that left. Left. And, and when we say left, I'm not saying left the relationship. That's a very nice way to put it. Yes, it's not necessarily not leaving the relationship, but yeah. the parent that's not around to parent. So we always have a lot of energy for single parents in this situation, I, I, actually, who happen to be women, mm -hmm. a lot of energy for what they should do, but, what they shouldn't do, what they should have done, what they shouldn't have done, and a lot less energy for the parents that I know a single dad that actually raised his own children. So. Maybe we should have... Um, a Jesuri moment with him because yeah. it's different from yep. when a man raises children and it's different from when a woman raises children on their own. We what are single parents say, and, yeah. and pulling weight. I understand emotional the highs and lows. Trust me, sometimes it's not something you can control. Mm. But the most important is you can, all, you can only do the best that you can per time. Because when your children were young, most of the things that are happening, they're not really aware. Mm -hmm. But when they become, you know, very Older. aware, th there are things you need to explain. Like I would tell my children that I'm very sorry that this wasn't the kind of future I, exp I expected or I desired for them. Mm. I take my, I tell them that I had a lot to, to that I had things to be blamed for, you know, getting me here. So they shouldn't blame only their dad. Mm -hmm. That both of us decided that this wasn't working. So it's not on one side, it's not on the other. I, 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 I know that every woman's challenge is not the same. Yeah. But why I do this is for my children. Because sometimes, whether we like it or not, it's a hard knock life for women. And no matter the decision you make, most of us have our children with us. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you're, you're the parent that stayed. stayed. You're yeah. the parent that stayed. So that means your lows, your highs, your mistakes, your challenges, they see. Yeah. They don't see the other parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even they judge you by your every day, but they judge them by when they see them. Mm. So, you know, it's topsy-turvy. 
yeah. for every woman. I know a woman that her, her co-parent's husband is amazing. I'm not even joking. Mm -hmm. They go on family vacation with his both of them are remarried, okay. okay, and they all go on family vacations together. So, blended so why do you think they blended. succeeded? I have why, no why idea. Think, why I think it's about the person analogies. that both parents are. They have three children together. Mm -hmm. The man is remarried. The woman is remarried. But they love and the lady in between, the lady and the man in between that is in between both yeah, of them. Yeah. They found a nexus. Uh -huh. They said they have dinner. They have dinners. Mm -hmm. As in, they have like maybe twice. And uh, this is every Nigerian. two weeks, uh, and they live like, abroad. Uh, but they're Nigerian. But they're, they're Nigerian. Nigerians. Mm -hmm. They live abroad, but they say every two weeks they have family dinner. They do in this parent's home, and they do in the other parent's home. And their children actually love their two siblings from okay, the dad. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the mother doesn't have other siblings from her, from her husband, from her husband, husband yet. now. So, but they said that's how that... What they decided is that none of these children caused whatever mm -hmm. happened between them. Mm -hmm. And that they know why they separated. And it wasn't anything sinister. They just were not working. And they wanted to be able to give each other an opportunity to, to find get better love. something better. <laughs> and you know, so they said, why should they now make life Different miserable for world. each other you know, and I, for I their said, children? I said something on the Honest Bunch um, podcast. I, and I said something, I said, whether we like it or not, both men and women who came together to have children, the children belong to the two parents. No matter how difficult your feelings are, no matter how difficult you find it to sort out the feelings you have towards the father of your children mm -hmm. or your child, you know that in that moment when you decided to make a baby or didn't decide to make a baby, but the fact that you Your guys came, came. to populate, <laughs> mm. and there was a tendency that this would happen. In so far as you decided, you realized them having a child by this person, that child doesn't belong to you only. Yeah. And it, it, the, the onus then lies on both the, the father of the child and the mother of the child, yeah. all children in this, in the, in the, as the case may Maybe. be, to decide to have a holistic, you have to remove yourself from yourself. Yeah. Lola and I, being single parents, we know everything about raising kids solo. Even when you're co-parenting, this is such a unique experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a conversation. This is a conversation it is. that and it, 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 a it's, it's a large it. conversation. Yeah. It's a deep conversation. Because there's so when Diola came and she was talking about trauma, mm -hmm. I know that a lot of us are recovering from a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even people that are in marriages, they are still having challenges yeah. together. Yeah. I know couples that the, the, their children broke mm. because they were never together. Mm. They were together in a marriage. They never divorced, but they broke their children. Yeah. With their constant bickering, their See. fighting. Their, See. Their there are some people them. and some families yeah. that would be better off divorced. Yes. Yeah. But because divorce is such a horrible word to them, they will stay together and create this unending situation of day in and day out trauma. For and themselves the, and their kids. And yeah. then the air, the air in the environment is so thick. And, and you know, toxic. the mistake we parents make is that we think children don't sense this. Yeah. They, sense they want to sense and die. They do. Every single this, thing. Yeah. So, you know, on this, on this single parenting, I, I know you guys, I have friends who are also single parents as well. And at the end of the day, one thing I, I'm always remembering now in this day and age, especially for men, a lot of Nigerian men will tell you, do whatever you want to do. Because you've had situations when the relationship is over, for some people, yeah. that means the kids are gone. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they've they removed yes. themselves. Once there's no relationship with they the person, themselves. there's no... And they're your own kids, though. Yes. But it's just like, that, they're gone. So and it's easy for... Do you know my bet? What, uh, let me... It's, for someone I know I'm close to. Yeah. She's divorced. Uh, mm. She never even married. They have children together. But... Do you know the, when she was to return the children to America, the father told her that I have no relationship with your children, so I don't know them, so I can't be responsible for them. Once their relationship ended, the parenthood ended. That is shocks and me. It's, it is. I'm still in shock. You know, I think it's the men who remember. do that because I, there's a tendency. Let me know. Let me just generalize. But there's a tendency that it comes from a lot of men because they feel. The mother has brainwashed or has filled the child's head with negative nonsense, and that the child is already groomed to hate them. That's the which point. is not the case. But it's, that's rarely the case. A it's lot of times, the, the a lot case. of the times, the children see what you're doing, and they've made up their minds and formed their own opinions. In regards to that, I also think it's important that we note that there are a lot of men who believe that 
whatever happens when you're 18 you're 20 you're 21 you're going to get married or whatever especially african men mm -hmm. you'll come looking for me please let me tell you this generation of children <laughs> they're not looking for anybody <laughs> yeah. be you mother be you father Listen. that absconded uh, this they, generation that's coming so they, they are, are gen alpha uh, they, 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 she said they're not looking for anybody you, that she never said it so honey you never said it <laughs> All right. I, thought it I thought about it you know like joke what they'll say mommy <laughs> That they are old parents or so old people's so home mm -hmm. abroad. Now, if anybody stress me, you gotta leave there. Ah. Ah. She's only warning you. Ah. Ah. For a ah. 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 Behave, <laughs> no, she said that, that that she never said it. Maybe mm. I just inferred it. Oh, you had a but dream. You are oh, sure a dream. It, but these children, mm. do you know that they are different from us? They we are. are attached to our parents. Yeah. These children were born independent. Yes. So any child, any mother and father now that is not working towards their retirement, using their children as retirement plan, no, you, you are going to be in for a rude shock mm. if you're not working to cultivate a relationship with your children. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're your children now, and we hope that when they're 18, they're 20, they're adults, you have a friendship. But if you're not working to cultivate a relationship with your children now, these are the children. This is where no contact, no contact yes. came from. They will cut you off. They, they will cut, cut you off. They will remind you. Our children. They will remind you. Even in Nigeria, people are going no but contact me, and I no will contact. Just constantly because recently I saw like a single dad who has mm. been very vocal about. I could see his pain. He has aged. Please, women, do not weaponize your children. Yes. I'm begging you. Yeah. I know it's a hard call. It's hard for me. My daughter, no matter how you even remove them from their dad, they will love them perpetually. Whether you are there or not, they will love them at the back. So you better be open so that you can know what they feel and you won't feel pain. Mm. I know a friend of mine that had, she had emotional nervous breakdown because she nurtured her children and everything. She never knew that she even left the man because of diabolic reasons. Wow. When she was pregnant with her last baby, she woke up in the midnight and saw her husband doing incantations mm. and rubbing his body with some kind of mm -hmm. red cloth so she ran from the home mm -hmm. and never returned but do you know tolu that this child has had a relationship with her dad all the years so when she was finished with school she wanted to go to london to study and her mom could not afford it do you know this girl asked her dad her dad paid for a tuition and that's how this girl left her mom had a nervous breakdown because she felt so betrayed you know, see, that's, that's, a, that's the thing. Ah, we're about they, to... It's a, no, I'm, I'm saying quick. that we need a day for yeah. this conversation. No, day. And that day is coming soon, really. Yeah, very we soon. need, because it is rife. Um, what her friend, what Lola's friend went through, you know, let's not even delve into that. Um, Tolu, we need to have a day where we, we talk about it. And this. I think we need to have something strong in these cups for that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick time out now. When we come back after the break, we have a special guest who's a strong advocate for people living with disabilities. It's all about inclusivity, empowerment, and breaking down barriers right here on Just Theory. And welcome back. We're streaming live on our social media platforms. We are at New Central TV. Please use the hashtag Jasiri to be part of the conversation so we know uh, for a fact that you're watching. Today's discussion is particularly close to our hearts. Emphasis on our hearts because these days it's not everyone that has a heart. In the wake of the recent uh, incident involving Senator Gwenga Daniel's wheelchair-bound son, Adebola Daniel, who was kicked out of a branch of a popular eatery at Muritala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, we're tackling disability, discrimination, and building an accessible society. Our guest is a passionate advocate for disability rights and is now the general manager Lagos State Office for Disability, Adenike Oyetune Lawal. We're very honored to have you on Just Siri. For we, I was wondering who would break 
script first because this is our Nikkei. Yeah. This is our Nikkei for our Nikkei. M for Nikkei. 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 You will always start it. Lolo, you will always forget. Forget who is going to she be She was doing rolling right now because I gave you designation now. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. must be people that know you. It will be your own people. <laughs> it will always be your own people. Yeah. All right, Nika, it's so good to have you here. So, you know, I was chasing you after this stuff happened. Yes. And we saw a lot of the actions that have been taken um, in regards from the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria as well as the agency that you had in Lagos State. But this situation has really, once again, brought a spotlight onto the issues that people with disabilities in Nigeria face. When you first heard of... When you first heard about the situation, how things went down, how he reeled out what happened and everything, what were your initial thoughts on this? Hmm. So, thank you for having me, ladies. Yes, you're um, welcome. I'll just try to paint a vivid picture. The Lagos State government was in the process of receiving bags of rice from the Dangote Foundation, and persons with disabilities were, you know, on ground. So I was literally just receiving rice when I noticed that my phone was beeping. And I couldn't read it in its entirety. So I then um, read it, a fraction of it. And as you might understand, I was just so upset because I've always known Debola Daniel on social media. And I've known him to be someone who's been very vocal about his experiences in Nigeria and outside of Nigeria. Um, I had not watched the clips that he attached, so I didn't know what the audio contained. And almost immediately, calls, we had to start making calls, yeah. you know, make calls, who can we speak yeah. to, who can do what. And thankfully, I'm so glad that, you know, I have a community around. And there was someone who I just walked up to on the spot and just said, okay, you know what, this is the best person to speak with. And almost immediately, we were in touch with the MD of FAN, and she wrote on it. And um, my Honorable Commissioner for the Ministry of Youth and Social Development in Lagos State, Mr. Mobolaji Ugulinde, we did not even bat an eyelid and immediately said, we are going to the airport. Mm. Mm. And that was it. That's how we got to the airport. So before we got to the airport, I had made another call and then there was a promise, oh, we will go to the said Itri and we'll give you feedback. I'm like, don't bother about your feedback. Just go. I'm on my way. Um, thankfully, Mrs. Um, Bumi Kuku, the MD of FAA, had already mentioned to my commissioner who was going to receive us. Uh, the regional general manager was going to receive us as well as the customer care um, terminal unit head on that day. And the rest is history, like they say. Yeah. Um, I was beyond, I still am beyond perplexed. Um, and that's also because of several connotations. And I'm sure we'll get into the conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as we're going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I would say that, you know, when we saw this post and everything that went viral, we saw the immediate, I want to put that immediate investigation by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and also your agency and um, you know Lagos State Office for Disability. Shortly after the E3 was shut down with an order for an apology, you know, so many, 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 many things that happen. People will say two things. They will say it's because of the person. Because that's why I put emphasis on the immediate. Is it because of this person? And because and is it enough? Because shutting them down, getting an apology, getting an apology is very little. I know a lot of people. I've gone to the Palms with my friend Medua. He's on wheelchair. We went to watch a movie. So that means he rode up. And by the time we came down, they said because it had gone past their time and they wanted to close. I don't know the story. They shut off the, the elevator. elevator. If it wasn't who I was and the amount of rain I brought, mm -hmm. they would have let him crawl down the stairs on his butt. It would have been totally unacceptable. So, ma'am, would you say it's because of who it is that we're seeing all this action happening? And this is this enough I for the community generally? So I'll start with the um, scenario you painted because this particular shopping mall finally had designated um, parking area for persons with disability at my instance because I would always go to the movies once a week and there would rarely ever be parking slots. Close so to every the single end, time, that. so today as we speak, those um, disability parking bay areas at the Palms are actually at my instance many wow. years ago. Mm. And the reality about it is, it's one thing to shout. It's one thing to shout strategically. Yeah. Um, we have been shouting, but we've not been strategic about our shout. And that's mm. why we haven't gotten so much. 
Mm. I'll go to the main question you've asked me now. The person, I, you know, I was really surprised when I was reading, listening to the introduction when I heard, oh, he's the son of Mr. Debola Daniel, first and foremost, is a human being. Mm. Mr. Debola Daniel, first and foremost, is a person with disability, born into the family of Otunba Binga Daniel, mm -hmm. who is the former governor of Ogun mm -hmm. State. He has no power of choice in deciding what family he will be born into. It is a privilege that no one can strip from him. As I speak to you today, at this point, I have not been contacted by um, now Senator Benga Daniel personally or through his office or his representatives. I wasn't contacted by Mr. Debola Daniel, mm. his office, his person, his legal representatives. All that mattered was a person with disability was discriminated, was discriminated against with evidence, video evidence, mm. for anybody who was on the... Uh, was with us on the day when it happened. Like I mentioned earlier, and I was very intentional with narrating what happened with my commissioner. Mm -hmm. The moment I mentioned it to him, on the spot, we are going to the airport. Until we got to the airport, I think shortly before we got to the airport, did I mention, oh, by the way, it's this person. It's this person. The regional general manager of FAN at the airport who received us did not know who. In fact, if my memory serves me right, when I was trying to mention, it didn't matter to me, eh, okay, and he moved on. Because what mattered most was, this has happened. Now to the third question, is it enough? It's not enough, and I'll explain to you why. I have brought simplified copies of our law in yes, Lagos. You'll dash us. Yes. <laughs> but um, the office was established in 2010 you know, by law of 2011 and then amendment in 2015. As I speak to you, this particular incident has again altered the need to emphasize that laws are only made to evolve. Mm. There will be evolution when it comes to laws. We can do all the policies that we want. Reality about it is if we do not evoke the humanity in people, yeah. nothing yeah. will happen. Yeah. There is a national law. There is a national commission for persons with disabilities. And trust me, I jumped on it. Why? Because they have the fine that stipulates that whoever it is, whether individual or organization that does this, must be fined. And mm -hmm. they are on in this particular cause. There are things that I can't share publicly, Until but I want you to understand that the, it will not end at the apology. The owners of this brand, in fact, the, the apology that was you know, presumably put was posted on social media. I do not know whether, you know, Mr. Daniel, I, I, haven't seen it. It. I haven't seen and I've I seen everything. Seen about I've seen case. everything. So, so as I speak today, I don't know if they finally reached out to him. Personally. I don't know if they have finally sent it to fan. I do not, my office has not received, received it. So it, 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 you realize that we want to, we can't play emotions yeah. with subject matters of this discourse. And finally, I want to say something. What I have for people that are shouting, just, are just looking for a scapegoat. Many of them are discriminatory in their thoughts. Mm. Your brother walks into the house and tells you, oh, there's this babe I've been liking. She comes and then you see that she's using a guide cane. You pull your brother aside. Mm. Are you mad? Is there no other girl in the whole of Lagos? Mm. Is there no other girl in the whole of Nigeria? What do you mean? Is this person in everybody? Please get out. People say it. Half of the people who are shouting now are people whose parents or siblings or spouses own buildings that are inaccessible these things are not accessible we must be realistic with our ask and this is my own i've always stood this ground with my with my expectations there are buildings that will not be altered there are buildings that will be adapted yes so our efforts now are what this has now done is expanding the focus of the conversation mm -hmm. into things that have to even do with building laws because it has several agencies so now everybody is on top of their game because now I'm coming at you. Why did you give them the permit? Mm -hmm. Why did they get the permit? When did they get the permit? They are, you see, look, there are things I cannot say, but I'm here to ruffle feathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, love the, we like that. Really, I love the fact that um, you're passionate about this because whether we like it or what she says is, is true. We, we, it's, it's one thing to, to lay down the law yeah. and say that this is supported by the law, yeah. but let's talk about emotions and sentiments to be publicly that publicly ridiculed is heartbreaking yep. because it went viral on social media. Yeah. A lot of people were commenting. Even people paid special attention to the response Bola gave to this treatment. And 
We know that Bola is just one of the millions of Nigerians yeah. who are living with disability. Guys, there are an estimated 25 million disabled persons in Nigeria. About one in every eight Nigerians live with at least one form of disability. And most common of these disabilities are visual impairment, hearing impairment, physical impairment, intellectual impairment, guys, and this is real, and communication impairment. Yet, with so many people living with disabilities, it seems our society is not even built to be accessible to people living with disabilities. Now, so I come back to you on this. Uh, you've made mention of buildings that are not accessible, and you've made mention of buildings that can be adapted to people who yeah. live with disabilities. Yeah. So let's, let's look at the challenges, apart from the ones you've enumerated, which are interesting, because a lot of people forget that that is, you call yeah. your brother aside and say, really, are you okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. In all of Lagos, this is who you brought home. Mm. So let's look, apart from that, what are, what are the other challenges that we overlook that with uh, regards to people living with disabilities? So let, let's add also misconceptions, okay. because you yeah. talked yeah. about that yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. So you've done an excellent job for me, because I, I you know, at every opportunity that I get, one thing I'm trying to do is to enumerate to the populace, um, you know, the persons that my agency oversees. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, it is every person with disability in Lagos. For administrative purposes, these individuals, these associations have decided to subsume themselves under what we call clusters. There are 11 clusters, about 10, 11 clusters as we speak, and they range across deaf, blind, blind and deaf, persons with physical disabilities, spinal cord injury disabilities, persons with spinal bifida, persons um, um, with albinism, they, we no longer call them albinos, they are people with albinism, um, dwarfs, um, um, but they did, I can't remember the other yeah, ones because yeah. I'm on the spot. Now, each ca category has peculiarities and these peculiarities also determine the kind of stereotypical perceptions that the populace have. Mm -hmm. For people with albinism, it's clear cut is popular. They cannot stay under the sun. Mm. You cannot have an employee who is a person with albinism and you expect that is when the sun is highest that the person must go out. It's impossible, it's impracticable. Because even if it looks to you in the moment that their skins are okay, mm -hmm. guess what? Oh, it's usually a build up through the years exposure. that expo you know causes them to be down with cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's such mm -hmm. a terrible reality for many of them. For people that are dwarfs, you see skits makers, you see movie makers, they think it's you know, do movies and talk about who, how a person who is a dwarf and a person with albinism will be good for money rituals. These things perpetrating the exactly the stereotypes. Be perpetrated. Education does not go beyond discourse of this nature. When we talk accessibility, we want to talk about buildings. Guess what? With people with neurological and intellectual, what happens to be the largest? Because yeah. that's where we have the autistic persons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have people with dyslexia, mm -hmm. we have people with Down syndrome. And the reality is that our receiving them in the society, the estates that they leave, the churches they go to, the mosques that their parents worship at, we are not embracing the realities of these families. But somehow, we expect that one agency somewhere will wake up because a woman has been shouting, it starts from you and mm -hmm. I. Yeah. And unfortunately, the realities that um, they are faced with is such that with, with Down syndrome, for instance, it has nothing to do with whatever. You can yeah. eat as healthy. It's a, it's a chromosomal yeah. concern. Can, can, you, know, you know, now that you said <laughs> something on Down syndrome, maybe because I'm very particular about some disability, I'm so particular about the blind society, I'm very particular about Down syndrome. In fact, if you follow my social media, you would know that algorithms bring them to me because I love yeah. to see how inclusive businesses need to be compelled to employ people with disabilities. Why? Because they are part of the demographic. Yeah. They are not handicapped. Some of them are not incapable of doing things. I see people with disabilities like Down syndrome do coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I love you. that one. Yeah, oh, and it's I have a friend more syndrome down. Um, she has a, dis, um, oh, a, yeah. a more more rainbow disability, and it happened because she had a baby. Yeah, and her daughter turned out to have Down syndrome, and she looked for help and aid, and it was so far to get. So she started a school 
and a foundation to take care of people living. But I found out that how people relate yeah. to, is it that we are not educating people enough? I see no parents that will not let other children play with their children because like they are dancing. Like it's contagious. So then, it's yeah, contagious. I was just it's not contagious. That. Is it that, what can we do? Because we can talk about lack of education, but what can we do to educate the people most so simplistic more? way, as with other approaches that have been taken with subject matters that are equally grave, is to continue advocacy. Mm. It's tiring. It's exhausting. I'll be very candid with you. It is really exhausting. But we cannot rest on our hours. We must continue. It's why we need to simplify it in the language that people understand. Yeah. You talked yeah. about myths earlier. There's a myth and a misconception that persons with disability cannot be, cannot do. The viral um, video. Um, video, the yeah. cerebral palsy. Oh, curl. gosh. Um, <laughs> the reality, again, is for persons that are living with you, you don't use living again. I've yeah. checked that. For persons with disability, mm -hmm. You realize that even we ourselves need to understand that, yes, there might be things we cannot do. do. But it's a trauma response. You want to do it yourself. I can do it. Leave me alone. So you, the, your caregivers and your loved ones are really actually genuinely concerned. So it's a lot. Another stereotype is the society wants um, um, to fix us. Mm. So everybody that sees me with one leg and crutches, oh, have you ever considered having a prosthetic limb? And I, oh, great, but thank, thank you. you. I don't need to be fixed. <laughs> It's a social construct that mm. you expect that everybody needs to be fixed because there's a perception in your head of how the ideal, like people say, normal person should be. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with employment, unfortunately, I'll be very candid to say we are still trying to navigate around oh, it. Oh, my God. You know why? But I want to give props to some... Um, I was going to say that. Yeah. Um, but let me just quickly add. Um, <laughs> the employment part is very fascinating because persons with disability very easily say, oh, I've gone to school. I have an education. You and I know that it's beyond going to school and getting yeah. an education to, mm -hmm. re to retain an employment. Yes. The realities that mothers that have children with disabilities face is a reality that I don't think anybody had ever considered into putting into the perspective. Case in point, she's the primary caregiver of the child. Now, do not also forget that the nature of disability plays a huge role. Yeah. If it's severe disability, sadly, such individuals are dependent from start to end. Yeah. Yes. If it's mild, a lot of them can be taught. So when government has empowerment or trainings, and we have it planned out for like one week, some of our people in this category cannot learn the skill in one week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. government has now also had to um, fine tune those the, trainings. Those Why? Adapt. Because the themes plus agenda in this administration is social inclusion, youth empowerment, and gender equality. So if I'm saying that I want to empower persons with disability and they cannot learn the skill in one week, we teach their caregivers. So the caregivers oh, then Down syndrome teach a teacher. Continually. Yes. Wow. Down syndrome a foundation of Nigeria, I'm so sorry, does that effectively. They will teach their, their caregiver. Mm -hmm. The caregiver in turn, in a, sometimes it takes as long as six months yeah. to teach just one skill. skill. Now guess where the problem that we are now trying to break even is? The market. So we teach you. Still goes back to stereotype and myths. Yeah. So we teach you, we empower you. But Who's society you? is not patronizing you. Patronizing Why? Because, the and let's be honest, the Lagos um, State government has in our employ um, under a thousand persons with disability. Wow. Lagos State government cannot employ every Everybody. person with disability who is employable and can retain and employment. Mm. So our conversation is expanding to when you go to school to get an education as a person with disability, for instance, what kind of future forward courses are we expected? Do we have the skills? Are there materials to equip you? I must give props to LASU. LASU has just launched their disability unit and they are working assiduously with equipping it. Ah. In Lagos State, for instance, um, everybody with disability from basic education to tertiary across all state-owned and run institutions. The education is free. Mm. Wow. Mm. The education, but people don't, even when you is tell them, they don't know. They don't. I, 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 I want to be, I want us to, 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 to go shout. back to something because I think I it's important. I, I specifically went back to Adebola's thread mm. and there were two tweets that stuck out to me because it tells you 
of the impact that this has on his life. If I can get those tweets up right now. And basically, they really talked about being a person with disability in Nigeria uh, in specifics. And those tweets were, let me quickly get one. So one says that being disabled, there it is, being disabled often rolls over my spirit, leaving behind a shattered <laughs> dignity and forgotten humanity. Nowhere more so than in Nigeria. Then the second part of his uh, tweets there is, the, the vile discrimination I face today at one of the global fast food chains, I don't think I can find the words, but I will search for them because enough is enough. But the one I'm looking for is, to be disabled in Nigeria is to be undesirable, yeah. unwelcome, and unaccepted. Yeah. As I've said before, it is a lonely, scary, and isolated place. Mm. When I read those words, after looking at everything he'd gone through, it really struck me. This is a society that is telling people like him, telling people like you that... Yep. Go to the side. Yes. We're, we're not ready for you. And I want to come back to something because uh, there was a study that the UK Department for International Development uh, did in 2008. And they found that when we talk about disability in Nigeria, we look at it in terms of welfare and charity. Mm -hmm. But the field of dis uh, disab disability studies finds that the focus should be on social adaptation, inclusion, and empowerment. So what it's telling me is that we ourselves are not addressing the issues of persons with disabilities the right way. How do we change that? So how we change it is by speaking to the community. And I know that the Ministry of Wealth Creation, for instance, just did an over 350 persons with disability empowerment training. And it ran across four locations in the state. And I remember that um, there was some agitation of sort. And one of the problems were, oh, um, what it is that we want you to do is not what it is you've done. You're so what we're doing now is we have gone back to the communities. We have gone back to the clusters. We have gone, tell us what. As I speak to you, as I sit here, not one of them has come back. Hmm. Wow. So Why do you think that is? It, to be, like, if you want me to be very candid, well, I'm not serious. I'm not yeah. serious. There's no serious. Yeah. So it's easy to say you want to teach us this, and but we don't thing. think that this is what we want to learn. So Just come back and tell me back how to, to help you. Okay. How about you let us know how? Because until you let us know how, when a yeah. Tolu Lope comes and says, oh, we would love to do this. Awesome. These are the things that will be required. Because we can think what we want on your behalf. But because it's your reality, yeah. you, you are to. there. You with, must with, I think us. it's a cultural cage in our minds that even people living with disability themselves, they have escorted themselves yeah. in. I remember my friend that is disabled. I was the first person to drag him to a beach. I said, if you have to work on your falls, I don't care. Yeah. I want you to have a little bit of fun. And we ended up carrying him out the car and he experienced it. But many of these people living with disability culturally have been conditioned yeah, to feel like they cannot do mass. more. So they have to break the mold. Yes. There's a blind person we all know, Joshua. He, he breaks the mold. He's formatted. He's moved houses. He knows where, what is where. If you went to visit him once, if you see Joshua move, you would really not think he's mm. blind. Because he has mastered the art. Mm. He knows his spaces. So I also think it's also a push that we need to push to break the mold yeah. of the cultural yeah. cage and, and bondage we find ourselves in. Because it is important to know Fine, okay, we know that nine years after uh, uh, the country ratified the UN Convention, for example, on the rights of people living with, or people with disabilities, uh, the we're former here. president had signed. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. So before you ask that question, let's take a break, because I want you to lay the foundation. Yeah. Because it's important that people understand there's a timeline that Nigeria yep. has simply failed yep. to, follow. to follow. So let's take a quick break. We'll continue this conversation looking at persons with, disabil persons with disabilities yeah, and the challenges they face. Disability, discrimination, and building an accessible society. We'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back to Just Siri. You're watching us at News Central TV. The ladies are here, and we're talking about people with disabilities. It's been a heated discussion, and so far also enlightening as well. Uh, we have Adenike Oyetunelawa with us in the studio. Still, we're talking discrimination and building an accessible society. Now, before the break, Lola was talking about one of her friends who she had to always force him, let's go to the beach, do something, break the mold, because it seems... Like we're all caged. It's a, a cultural caging of the mind that uh, people with disabilities feel that 
probably they're not enough or probably uh, they have to restrict them themselves to a, living a certain type of lifestyle. But we're saying, listen, it's a season of breaking the glass ceiling, so let us just do that. Sometimes you need the push. But we were now laying the foundation that the former president, Mohamedou Buhari, uh, nine years after Nigeria ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of People, uh, Persons with Disabilities, he had signed into law the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mouthful. We all know <laughs> the law. We always hide behind the law. Yeah, the law is there. It's enshrined recommendations of the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities while awarding punitive damages to victims of discrimination. Yes, 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 it was widely applauded, yeah. but that's one thing. Implementing it is always another thing. So we have the law is there, implementation is there, but there are obviously gaps in between. Now, what are the gaps? Let's talk about the gaps that need to be addressed in the, from the law and to the implementation of the law. You said Lagos State, you know, mm -hmm. they have, you, know you, you came with the pamphlets of the law and Really, we have to be familiar with these things. We cannot just sit in, in isolation and say, oh, it doesn't concern me. Thank yeah. God it's not my portion. It's not, it's your portion. <laughs> it's your portion. Yeah. It's We're living in an all-inclusive all society, guys. Mm -hmm. So what do we, we know the law. People stay for tired. Yeah. We're tired. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. what I want to ask. For people who don't know, Lika is actually also a trained it's lawyer. Always, yeah. It's always the law. Your your I know you're very happy. <laughs> Lika is a trained lawyer. But as I say that, I also want to say we have, we've had this law since Buhari signed in 2018. Yeah, yeah. Do we know any company, any individual I know a company. That, has, no, that has been held responsible no, based no, no, on no, this exactly. law? We are years into it. What, six years? So I'm I'm not, the only thing I know how to count is money. So I'm not <laughs> sure. So 2018 to now, have we seen this yeah. law actually hmm. being used yes. to, to use people as examples? And your agency should so take it out and find them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you remember that one of the things I said was, my agency is actually in the process of amending the law. And the Lagos State Law. The Lagos State Law. Mm -hmm. And because I had established that for administrative purposes, persons with disability have been able to put themselves in clusters. Yeah. We have met with these clusters and have asked for their input. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the number. I will not mm -hmm. disclose to you which num what number of clusters have, have come, come, back. Back. come back. I will not. That is a big lesson. We will go back to the stakeholders in the space and then open it. So what we are doing is consolidating what they have done. And put, because we, the reality is, people also need to accept that. That you sent us input doesn't mean it to reflect in the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as it concerns the um, Prohibition Act, I do not know of, there might be. And um, I can't say that there's been no um, company that ha hasn't been penalized or fined. I do not know. But what I know for a certainty is as I speak to you today, the executive secretary and his team, Mr. James Lally, are actually in on the Adebola saga. And um, unfortunately, I will not be able to disclose what they have done. But yeah. best believe I'm also on them. Like, it has to be more. Um, when it comes to knowing the law, unfortunately, until it affects you, um, <laughs> Lord Denny says, that God forbid that I should know all the laws, but at least I know where to find the laws. Mm -hmm. When I need it, I know where to find the to laws. Find it. And the agency was created to, to, to quite a number of things that are stated in the law. Um, one of it is, again, which I'm going to emphasize on is the data of persons with disabilities yeah. in Lagos. Um, I'm not going to say we are committing, but we are, we've, we've moved through the whole technical gamut of how we can digitally capture Capture. This. Because let's be very factual. You say that you're on wheelchair, you can't get access into a banking hall. If we remember, the reasons why banking hall and um, banks started to have those doors was incessant armed robberies yeah. across the country, mm -hmm. and people were dying. Yeah. Every bank has an emergency door, every single bank. Yeah. But you know, if you watch border security movies, you know that people face different things. Even yeah. in crutches, they put drugs in crutches. Right. So when you go through screening, abroad it's a different ball game entirely mm -hmm. so when you go and you say i'm a person and they can see that you're on wheelchair you can't prove so we have the last year registration we are in the process of doing all of that and ensuring that by a mere this is my last year card 
there will be a signatory somewhere, somehow, be able to identify that you're a person with disability. And then you can get access. You'll be, you'll be screened so that mm -hmm. my persons will not say, right, yeah. you will be screened. Mm -hmm. At least you'll be given So that you don't answer. use their security door and show up with to a bypass. gun. To bypass, yes. Mm -hmm. So our ask has to be staggered. And I'm saying this publicly. My PWDs in Lagos need to actually just, let's stagger it. The registrations will start. It will run into months because the back end is... It's, it's a mess. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm putting a technical support. I'm glad that I've been able to sit with a few technical people and to do all of that. And Lola was asserting to something. There are some companies without government funding, without exemption of tax on assistive devices, without what else. Those are the few things that people say that government can do, you know, yeah. support with um, adaptation um, some. Yeah. There are some companies that I must actually applaud. Clean Ace Dry Cleaning and Studio 24. Mm. They have Studio 24 just trained some deaf people oh. and have put them in paid employment. They did it without any government applauding them or coercing them. Wow. Clean Ace has supported well over a thousand persons with disability in the last how many years? And the reality about it is we must invoke the humanity in people. Yeah. No matter the policies and laws that we do, it will just be paper. It will just be book. It is you and I. And you know the funny thing is, we always expect that experience is the best teacher. With disability and inclusion conversation, experience is not the, the best, best teacher. teacher. Because the things, you know how they say, the chicken will come home to roost. The mm -hmm. things that you thought you should have done when you had the opportunity to and did not, when you start to woo your aged parents to travel, is when it will dawn on you that how come I never thought about this? Mm. About this. Mm. Yeah. And disability is just 30 seconds, 10 seconds, that's it. Because mm. there are various, some people wake up and they are blind, they lose yeah. sight. A pregnancy can do that. Too. A pregnancy yeah. can do that. Yeah. So learning Braille, um, one of my biggest, biggest dreams is to see sign language mainstream. Imagine. Because the Imagine. world is going. We need your, ch your children that are younger and can and assimilate. Please expose right. them to sign language. Um, 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 education. There's a young man that did a documentary recently called um, um, Kaseko. It's on YouTube. And he, he highlighted the challenges and used the opportunity to create awareness around persons with albinism. And it's such a magical tool. So imagine that every single person does it. Imagine that when we are doing our news, we have sign language interpretation. Mm -hmm. Imagine that our captions are interpreted. Close. Because yeah. those are the things that persons with disability actually can say, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. This is really inclusive. We did a few points of mine. <laughs> and you actually landed on one of the main questions was in terms of yeah. painting that picture for what an inclusive and accessible society Indeed. is. So we're not going to finish this conversation today. We were going to do hot topics, but this is a hot enough topic <laughs> that we needed to extend the conversation. Uh, and as you said, you can't tell us everything, but we hope we will get updates yes. as, as this particular case involving Adebola Daniel uh, continues. And it, it, it's going to have to be an example for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but Ade Nike, or Yetunde Lawal, because she says she doesn't like it when I call her Nike. Anyway, she's one of ours. Uh, thank you so much, the thank GM you. of the Lagos State Office uh, of disability. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very extremely proud of you. Of you, ma'am. <laughs> I heard ma we, are the, we are the proudest people. <laughs> We're very proud of you, of you, and we look forward to all the great work that you're going to do there. Yes. All right, on behalf of all the ladies and our guests as well, this is how we close the curtain on this today's show. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m., bright and early, with some more fantastic and bold conversations. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.